Uh, one story I love to tell, I was a young manager, uh-huh. one of the very first delegates, you know, I, I probably wasn't 20 years old, and uh, the, the guy, was a kid that was working for me, and I told him to go and rotate the peanut butter in the peanut butter aisle. Okay. No kidding. Right? No, so like take the, the ones in the butter. back and, so, and put them in the front or something? Exactly, right. You're rotating the dates to make sure yeah. that the oldest is front, the yeah. newest is in the back, right? Yeah. I said rotate. I go over to check on him. He turned He it. is literally <laughs> turning the peanut butter because I wasn't clear in my terminology. Yes. And that's the kind of crap that you got to make sure that you – that everybody understands what you're talking about. Oh my goodness! When you're doing that kind of stuff. So it, this, I, I think you you gotta you gotta download that book, um, the Story Brand um, book. I'll get it's, that. it's it's amazing. I'm reading it right now. I do audiobooks, and um, I I've, do too. I've been doing. I've been listening to his stuff for 18 plus months. Um, yeah. And he's just an inspiration. He he's he truly is. You know. So I think you would just love it. Um, so, you know, we've talked about facility managers. Now let's talk about vendors, you know, and cause again, you work on kind of both sides and yep. you know, at the end of the day, a vendor wants to win business. But here's right. the thing, in my opinion, I think a lot of vendors going after this industry are doing it the wrong way. Um, they're not building relationships. They're not building trust. They're trying to say, well, we've been in business for 80 years. Good. Does that does me nothing, you know? And so like, what kind of advice would you give for vendors on how to win and earn business from f- these facility managers? Stop pitching and educate. Okay. I mean, I think that's really what it amounts to is anybody can tell you what they do, how long they've been in business. That's what every company does. Yep. Everybody puts an ad. I mean, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of those social media things are filled with ads about we do this better, we do that better, we do that. Okay, help me out. Educate me on why that matters. Yes. Why it's, is why am I forget the company? Yeah. Why should I even do business with your industry? Why does your industry matter? What purpose does it serve? How does it help my customer? Yeah. The people driving back up to the building every day and bringing their cash in and running up through the register lanes. Yep. How does what you do help me help my end customer? That makes a lot of sense. And so whenever you say stop pitching and start educating, what would you say is like a normal pitch? And then to, so we could distinguish both of them because I know what it is, um, you know, and then what would you say is like educating and how would you approach it? Well, you know, I think for uh, what I see as a pitch is that dog and pony show, right? You got your slide deck out and you're telling me how long you've been in business and how many customers you serve and all those things are important, Yeah. but they're only as important as if I even know that I need your services or why your service is important to me. Yes. And for uh, an FM manager has to be an, um, knowledgeable about a lot of things, but they're maybe not an expert in any. Yep. And so... From sitting on that side of the desk, I want you to help me become that expert. Oh, maybe I it's, like that. Um, I like ten, that. You know, maybe it's uh, you know you do a webinar or a quick education series on for us a CMMS platform as to why is a CMMS platform important? What can it do for you? Forget that it's how many 50, 50 or sixty competitors are there out there, right? It applies to every single one of them. Yeah. But the one that's going to get the business is the one that helps educate me on the things that I should look for, things that I should be doing, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Help me become more of an expert in what you do so that I can make better decisions. That makes a lot of sense. And, and you know, I'm, I'm all about the education. Um, and, it, and it's kind of like what you're talking about is, is telling them why certain things are important, what kind of pain points it's, it's uh, solving. And, and knowing those pain points of your customer, because I'm, I'm assuming, you know, you've been in the industry a long time. You're saying that, you know, what makes Carigo different is, is me because I know what you're going through. So you can relate to the pain that these people are going through. And then all you have to do is just educate them on those pains. And if you don't get these things solved, this is what's going to happen. This could happen. This can happen. This can happen. Yeah. And it's not that this whole like, you know, this tragedy is going to happen or anything, but it's, it, it could all start, you know, culminating in a sense to where it's um, it all adds up and it can start affecting 
the facilities that you're managing or the, all that stuff. And, and I think as a vendor, I think we need to get better at doing that, um, is, is getting better at educating and, and do less pitching. And, and that's where, and I, you might actually agree with this, that's where I think business development sales has really shifted to like almost like a sales and marketing thing. Like yep. I think if you're going to be in sales, you have to be decent at marketing and understanding on how to talk and communicate and vice versa. I mean, just out of curiosity, would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, I would agree. And I think it's um, not being afraid to tell the truth. Okay. And and quit being try quit trying to be as salesy and just talk to me. Yeah. You know, let's have a conversation. Let's be now on the flip side is you also have to remember that everybody who you're talking to is going to be guarded and rightfully so because yes. there's still a lot of people out there that are pitching. Right. Yep. yep. And and again, it goes back to the difference is you. The difference is how you're approaching it, how you're speaking to people, how you're following up, how you're putting pressure on somebody or not putting pressure on somebody. All of those things play into that. Um, and I think for me, what helps me is that because I sat on the opposite side of the desk, I don't want to get 15 phone calls. That's not going to help me make a decision. Yeah. Actually, it will. <laughs> if you call me 15 times in, in two weeks, it's going to really help me make a decision because you're the same guy who's going to call me 15 times in two weeks or you're the op exact opposite. You're going to call me 15 times until you sell me and then I hear crickets and yeah. I never hear from you again. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's kind of falls into one of those two camps. But yes, I think you really have to become more of a marketer. And but that goes back to sharing your story. Yes. Being authentic. Um, you know, those types of things. And that's what's working in today's marketplace. The difference is quit worrying about whether they are actually, uh, they're hearing you, but they're still going to be guarded. So just yes. because they don't react in the same way, you're still educating, you're still get out there building that relationship. Uh, don't look at for immediate results. I, I love what you're saying here, because this is something that I've, I've learned over the years of running a business for a while too, is um, best example is I was going through my my CRM for people that are listening. A CRM is a customer relationship management system, and it allows me to manage my leads. Uh, and so I'm going through my leads, and there was a, an FM, uh, like a senior FM, I think. I'm not going to go. The, I'm not going to tell the company name, but anyways, um, they were. We've had a in depth conversation back in May because they were interested in learning about our HVAC stuff. Timing wasn't right. They didn't really say that, but things were just kind of not going. You know there. Anyways, I, you know, kind of put it in the back burner, but I had a follow up date, you know, for like either end of October or like early November. And so anyways, I just, you know, shot him another email like, hey, we had a chat, you know, back in May. We've had several conversations. I know the timing was all right. Love to pick up the conversation again. Left it as simple as that. The guy replies back to me, I kid you not, 10 minutes later, he goes, your timing couldn't have been any better. And he goes, I've CC the person that's going to be contacting, uh, contacting you, either me or him will contact you. We need to get, we need to chat. We need to discuss this. Where I'm coming from is that that never would have happened if it wasn't for that phone call that we had on a conference call, the several emails I've sent, not pitching, but simply just, Hey, you know, I'm here for you. What do you need? Cause most yep. salespeople, they would have given up after that first conversation and then they didn't sign, you know? And, and so that's the thing that I, what you're telling me is that as a vendor, you should learn how to work the process and enjoy the process to earn and win that business. Would you agree? Yep. Absolutely. And I think the other thing is, remember in these larger companies and most retailers that you're you're educating your internal salesperson. He's not always the one or she is not always the one who makes the decision. Yep. But the more the more tools that you can provide, the more education that you can give them, the more that they can speak to your particular product, the better off that you you are because you're educating that internal salesperson. A lot of times you may not get initially to uh, the chance to give that pitch to everybody or to make your case to everybody. Yeah. So that, and, and, but if you think about it that way, he's their partner or she's your partner. So how can we work together to yes. make sure that you get what you're needing? Oh, and, and it's, it's about the decision. Yeah. It's not about me selling. It's about the decision. All I really care about is your decision. Yes, I'm interested and I want to know more or 
you know what? No, this is not a good fit. Now, what's really interesting is when you as the salesperson recognize it's not a good fit and you tell them, you know what? This is not a good fit. And they're like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> You're right. turning me so down? I'm, say, I'm trying to help you. This won't fit what you need. Yeah. And so, you know, you got to be willing to call it when you when that happens. But yeah. that's your that's your job is to get to the decision. I love it. I love like I said, I think this is why you and I see eye to eye in a lot of the stuff because um, y- your approach is is spot on. Uh, and uh, like I said, like it's just something that I've noticed in the industry. It's it's a, it's a hard sell. Now I'm not saying everyone does that. I'm not implying that, but through and through, kind of what I've seen from the you know how long I've been here, it's that, and it's all about building that trust and educating. And and once you do that, it's like I mean you know I, I'm married. I, I never would have asked my wife to marry me on date number one, you know, and it, it, it took a while for me to to build that and. And, and now, you know, it's it's great, but it's the same thing. Like, we can't ask customers to marry us on the first conversation, you know, on the first date. It's all about like, hey, let's just go on a date. Let's just let's just do this. Let's just do that. And that's how it goes. That's, that's right. That's cool. exactly right. Hey, so next I want to kind of cover is is kind of retail is changing, you know, and you've seen it for 30 years, how it's evolved. Um, I haven't been in the industry nearly as long as you have. <laughs> and I would love to see kind of what you like, what you see for the future. Like, what kind of changes do you kind of see kind of happening? Um, I mean, I had this going on with uh, same conversation with Bruce, Con- Bruce Condit, the VP of Marketing and Communications for Connects, and he has some great insight. And I'd love to see what you think. You know, I, it, it is changing, but a lot of it is still the same. Okay. Um, the 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 again, it's going to be the end customer is what you're trying to to connect with. And, and I, I think, think the, the difference, difference is because of internet, internet because, because of the, the ability to get your stuff delivered, um, how we're interacting with those customers is becoming less about the actual trip and more as a constant stream of interaction. Um, and I think that's where retailers are you know, beginning to make that transition is – making sure that the brand that they sell and interact with both soul, uh, TV, newspaper, all that kind of stuff has to deliver. And it, it, it was almost a transactional. So I would look at an ad and I would think, okay, I need that. And then I would go to the store. Yep. Well, today I can look at that ad. I can actually click here on my phone when I see that ad. I can do that. And now I can – and I'm driving – I'm sorry, I'm riding in the car, not driving and texting and all that kind of stuff, right? But I'm riding in the car and I can purchase it and in 15 minutes I can pull up in front of the store and go in and pick it up. So what does that entire experience look like? I don't think the stores are ever going to go away. Yeah. It's what they look like is what's changing. And that's where um, even some of the physical plants, reading some articles where companies are now taking those physical plants and instead of them going dark, they're using them as distribution centers. Yep. And that's what Walmart was so good at for years and years and years, right? Uh, his, uh, he built a distribution network. He did. That was – That's really – and, and that's, that's all we're doing. That's, that's all they got. You know, you, you go, go back, back and it's not a traditional store. It's a distribution network. And, and I'm happy you're saying that because I, I kind of see the same thing too. I mean, when you when uh, Amazon purchased Whole Foods is a great example. You know, yeah. Amazon is not in the grocery business, but they're using Whole Foods as a distribution center to probably start sending like what um, all the other delivery systems out there are doing for food. And they're going to be using these as their – "Quote unquote distribution centers." I'm assuming. I, I don't know if they've, they've already claimed that, but I'm seeing that that sort of stuff, or seeing other companies where they start partnering with each other that are kind of slightly different industries, and it's, they're supporting certain aspects of them. Yeah, I think the biggest change that we're going to see is what the employee base looks like, because now, um, and I think that's both on the retail side as well as the service industry side, because yep. now you've got all of these gig. It's the gig economy, right? I don't have to work for actually any one particular person. I can be an Uber driver, an Uber Eats driver, a favored person, a delivery person, a deliver packages. I can do all those things in all of my day, in, in my day, right? Yep. And so I've got five jobs 
But the cool part is I get to decide when I work. I get to decide what shift I get. I get to decide all those things. I think we're going to see more and more retailers adopt some of that as it relates to how they're uh, actually staffing their locations, uh, different things like that. So it'll be very interesting to see. And even the service industry. Yeah. I can be a plumber and I can work for five different plumbing companies or I can be an electrician and work for five different electrical companies. How can I turn that into a gig economy, right? And then get my customer service quicker. Yeah. And then, you know, evaluating. So I think that's the change that we're going to see in, uh, in the biggest piece in both FM and in the retail industry. And just really quick, I know what you mean by the gig economy, but can you explain what what you like what that kind of means if you will to our audience that may not know absolutely so gig economy is uh, as an individual there are multiple apps and uh, companies that you can actually go out and apply for uh, you are a 1099 employee which means that you're a contract employee you don't okay. have a boss you work for yourself but they offer you opportunities to earn money. Maybe it's doing a survey and taking some pictures of something, or you're an Uber driver and you're going to drive at you know um, and deliver people, or you're delivering uh, products, or you're delivering packages, or you're delivering Amazon packages. Yep. All of those things, but it works off an app on your phone. Typically, um, you're going to sign up for it and you get paid immediately. So if I go and do a gig economy thing and I go and do this favor for somebody, I'm going to run and deliver your groceries and you're going to, I get X percent of that grocery delivery and, you know, a tip of 10 bucks or whatever. Yep. Yeah, I'm making $12, $15 an hour. The difference between that person get being in a gig economy is they get to choose when they work. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Around particular schedule. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um. This is this has been great. You know, I, I think you we've covered a lot here. We're kind of getting close to our time here, but um, yep. you know, the thing that I want to kind of ask you, and and I know that you know your role at Krigo has has been there for just over two months, and and so I'm not going to ask you for your expertise on everything, but <laughs> you know, where do you do you see Krigo being able to assist other industries like commercial property managers or like hotel GMs? Because they kind of have the same kind of thing of like FMs that they go through where they manage one property or several properties, but they have lots of trades or or vendors they got to work with. You know, I think that's one of the things that excited me about Carigo um, a lot. If you're in the retail industry, you saw Carigo as another CMMS platform. Yep. The cool part about it is that they are really uh, focused on a lot of different verticals in the healthcare vertical and how, you know, there are specific needs for healthcare companies that they are, uh, they're consolidating, they're managing multiple facilities, they're managing one large facility, all that kind of stuff. So healthcare is one. Um uh, the, the the hospitality industry, the um, multifamily industry, Curigo is able to help a lot of different industries like that. Okay, we're very well known in the restaurant space because we have a strong asset management yep. platform. Yep, all that really applies to every other industry. Okay, right, and that Perfect. goes back to that configurable versus uh, ver- versus uh, you know doing the uh, I want you to. <laughs> Customize exactly. Thank yeah. you for telling me saying yeah. that. The um, so that's really what I see is exciting about Curigo is it can. Now the other cool part going back to the vendor piece is you can also use it as a service provider to run your entire company. Okay. And the misnomer is, or the first thing that comes in mind, well, I'm I'm accepting work orders for other companies, not just Curigo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You are. And so our system will actually give you that one pane of glass where you're able to run your entire company, scheduling, billing, invoicing, time card management, all that stuff, right? But you're a service provider and you can accept work from anybody. We're not changing that. We're just giving you a better platform to run your business off of. Quit developing software on your own because it's expensive. It it totally is. And that's something that, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, we... We've been doing this since 1999. We understand it. We know how to do it, and we do it well. Yeah. No, that's great. You know, the last thing I was going to have here is kind of what makes you guys different from your competition, but we already know. They don't have Troy Bachelor. That's and- it. They don't have me. <laughs> I love that. That was probably one of the best answers that you could have given. I, I love it. It's it's uh, But it's 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 great because you offer a lot, you know, and, and 
your background, your knowledge relating, um, that's, that's important to, to basically do business with those types of people, you know? So yeah, like, like I, I said, said, it's not that I know that much more. more. It's just that I've lived it before. And, um, and, and I try to bring that to every relationship and every discussion that we're having is, um, I'm, I'm trying to be a helper, a coach, a guide, that yeah. kind of stuff and, and bring my experience. So that's really that. why I, I say that. That's awesome. Well, now this is the, the last part where I just kind of give you an opportunity to, to do your pitch, if you will, but just, you know, how do they get in touch with you? You know, what do they need to do? Yeah. So, you know, I don't think, uh, I really don't believe in pitches. I like the fact that, you know, we don't spend a lot of time on this podcast really trying to go through my company's better than that company and all that kind of stuff. I (laughs) just don't believe that. Um, everybody has a great company. We all get up in the morning and we go out to do our best job, uh, for our clients and help them do that for their customers. Uh, Folks can really get in touch with me. It's Troy B as in ball at Carigo.com, Troy Bachelor, Troy B at Carigo.com. Okay. Or they can give me a call, 703-357-7530. Call me anytime. Happy to help in any way I can, whether it's you're interested in the Carigo platform or you're interested in just understanding a little bit more or, you know, we can trade, uh, pick each other's brain and trade uh, retail stories. That's yeah. fine, too. I like that, too. And you're also on LinkedIn, so they could also do a search on you and connect with you that way. Am I correct? Connect, yes. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm on there. And if you are if you are a member of Connects, you can connect with me there as well. I usually visit all the different shows. If you're not a member of Connects, why? I just that doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Um, so you need to do that. Uh, and if you want to know how, you can reach out, and I'll be happy to help you with that too. Awesome. Well, Troy, I appreciate your time. I think the information that you shared has been invaluable. I think our audience is going to love it. Um, your perspective, your way of doing stuff. I, I can see why you and I geeked out for a bit, and and, <laughs> and then and then, but more importantly, we we seem to get along, and we've only had two conversations. You know, fun, fun um, stuff. It's always good to find kindred spirits. right? Exactly, I agree. So again, guys, this is Javier Lozano with. Um, sorry, this is Javier Lozano with <laughs> Facilities and Property Management Secrets Radio. This is unscripted, as you could tell, because I just stuttered over my own words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with CMI Mechanical. We are a national HVAC and refrigeration company. If you have any questions about what we can do for you for any kind of national service, any kind of uh, MNR, or just even regular preventive maintenance, we can definitely help you with that. Um, Troy, I can't thank you enough for your time for today. Uh, and I look forward to having our conversations again in the future and meeting at uh, the next event that we'll have probably with Connects uh, next year. Um, otherwise, have the, the best Thanksgiving and a great Christmas coming up. Hey, thanks, Javier. It's been great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.